We're going to prove a really nice theorem about cyclic groups. Here it is. Every subgroup of a cyclic group is cyclic. You can see I've already started the proof for us there. We're going to have so much fun. But a couple quick things before we get into the proof. For starters, of course, we need to know the definition of a cyclic group. And I've given that right here. We say that a group is cyclic if it's entirely generated by the powers of a single element. When we write this, this means that G is the cyclic group generated by A. It consists of all powers of A. I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson introducing cyclic groups if you need a more thorough introduction. Also, for this proof, we need to know Euclid's division lemma, so I've stated it here. It says that if T and M are integers, and m is positive, then there exists unique numbers, a quotient q, and a remainder r, so that t equals mq plus r. Really, this means that m goes into t q times with a remainder of r, where r is at least 0 and strictly less than m. The remainder r has to be less than m, because if it was greater than m, that would mean that m could go into t an additional time, and so that would have to make the quotient bigger, which would then bring r back in this acceptable range. So certainly r is at least 0 and less than m. With all that said, we've got our definition of cyclic groups. Hopefully you're familiar with Euclid's division lemma. We can move on to the proof. The proof begins, of course, by taking an arbitrary cyclic group. So G is the cyclic group generated by A. Then we take an arbitrary subgroup. So we say let H be a subgroup of G. So this means G consists of all powers of A. And since H is a subgroup of G, H certainly consists only of powers of A, because all of H's elements are also in G. So to show that H is a cyclic subgroup, we need to show that H is entirely generated by one of its elements. Now all of its elements are powers of A, so we're trying to show that H is generated by some power of A. But which power of A should we pick? Well, certainly, we should pick the smallest power of A. That can be used to generate all the other powers of A that are in our subgroup H. So, we say this. Let M be the smallest positive integer such that A to the M is an element of H. We're simply taking the smallest power of H we've got. Now, it could be that H is the trivial group containing only the identity. In that case, we're done because the identity composed with itself is just the identity. So the identity is the generator of the trivial group. The trivial group is cyclic. So certainly we can move on from that case. So if H is not the trivial group and it has more than the identity, then we know for sure that it has to have some positive power of A. If you supposed it had only negative powers, like A to the negative N, for example, well, that wouldn't work because H is a subgroup. So it has to have inverses, which means it would have the inverse of this negative power, which is a positive power. Okay, so for sure our subgroup H has positive powers of A, and so we're certainly at liberty to take the smallest power of A. We're calling that A to the M. We're hoping to show that the entirety of H is in fact generated by A to the M. We know, since H is a subgroup of G, that it only contains powers of A. We're trying to show now that it only contains powers of A to the M. That would mean it's a cyclic group generated by A to the M. So we're going to take an arbitrary element of H and show it's a power of A to the M. So we'll write take A to the T from our subgroup H. We're just taking an arbitrary element, and we know that every element of H looks like this. Every element of H is a power of A. And now we're trying to show that A to the T is in fact a power of A to the M. If we can show that any arbitrary element of H is a power of A to the M, then we've shown it's a cyclic subgroup. Towards the goal of showing that A to the T is a power of A to the M, 
we have to consider how many times m goes into t. So we have to think about t divided by m. Applying the division lemma then, we know that t is equal to m times q plus r for some integer q and where r is at least zero and less than m. And again, this is simply a consequence of the division lemma. Let me try to fit this on the above line just to make our work a little bit smaller. All right, so t is equal to mq plus r by the division lemma. Then we can write that a to the t, certainly, is equal to a to the mq plus r, since these things are equal. Then by our exponent laws, we can split this up as a to the mq multiplied by a to the r. Now, we should take special interest in a to the r, because remember, r, the remainder from our division, is less than m. However, it's also at least zero, so r can't be negative. Now, this means that if we can show that a to the r is in our subgroup h, since m is the smallest positive integer, with a to the m being an h, well, if a to the r is in h2, it can't be positive and smaller than m. It can't be positive and smaller than m. So if it's smaller than m, it would have to be zero. So perhaps we can show that this remainder is zero by showing that a to the r is an element of h. To do that, let's solve this equation for a to the r. So we'll multiply both sides by the inverse of a to the mq. Completing that multiplication, we get that a to the mq inverse times a t equals, over here the inverse and a to the mq would cancel out, and so we're just left with a to the r. Now let's rewrite this with a to the r on the left side of the equation. So a to the r is equal to all of this stuff. Now how could we establish that this is an element of our subgroup H? Well, it's not too difficult. Remember, we know that a to the m is an element of H. So let's rewrite this, this part here, as a to the m. By our exponent laws, we could write it as a to the m to the negative q, and then still multiplied by a to the t. Now, we in fact know that both of these things are in h. We know that a to the m to the negative q is in h because, remember, a to the m is in h, and since h is a subgroup, it contains inverses and it contains powers of a to the m because it's a subgroup, so it's closed. So we could compose a to the m with itself, we could compose the inverse of a to the m with itself, we'd still be in the subgroup. So certainly, a to the m to the negative q is an element of h. We also know a to the t is in h, because a to the t was taken as an arbitrary element of h. Since both of these are in h, their product also has to be in h, since again, h is a subgroup, so it's closed. So we could write a to the m to the negative q multiplied by a to the t is in h. But before I write this is an element of h, let's go one step further. Remember that this guy came from this equation. It's equal to a to the r. So this element, which equals a to the r, must be an element of h. And now we're almost done. We've shown that a to the r is an element of h. Now remember, r, the remainder that we got when we divided t by m, r is at least zero, but less than m. And we took m to be the smallest positive integer so that a to the m is in h. So if a to the r is in h, but r is in fact smaller than m, then it mustn't be positive. We took m to be the smallest positive integer, so a to the m is in h. So since a to the r is in h, but r is smaller than m, r can't be positive, which forces it to be zero. And so we can conclude at this step that r 
is equal to zero. And so this guy up here, T, which we know is equal to MQ plus R, well, we can actually simplify this. T is in fact just equal to MQ because R is zero. So now coming down here to the home stretch, A to the T, we now know is in fact just equal to A to the MQ. And we can then rewrite this using our exponent laws as A to the M to the Q. This is a power of A to the M. So we've shown that an arbitrary element of H is in fact equal to a power of A to the M. That was our original goal. We wanted to show that our arbitrary element, A to the T, was a power of A to the M. Thus, every element of H is a power of A to the M. And so, our subgroup H is a cyclic subgroup. And we could write that H is the cyclic group generated by A to the M. Of course, in this case, it is a subgroup of G. And so, we've proven that Every subgroup of a cyclic group is cyclic. Hope this was helpful. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions.